What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook, late in the day on Wednesday. I've just done the recycling. It's very exciting here in New York City. And it's very cold, but not quite as cold as it is in Green Bay. Luckily for the Packers, their Week 17 game in Detroit will be indoors, away from the elements, and away from all consequence, because the game that they will be playing, 1 o'clock Eastern, kickoff there at Ford Field, is essentially meaningless, other than what young guys put on tape for Mike McCarthy and company. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Chris, what up? Kevin, cold in Jersey, too? No doubt, man. It is cold out there. Um, thanks a lot for hopping on, everyone, all 100 of you already. Very nice to see you all. Um, we'll jump right in. The injury report is long. A um, couple of highlights. Um, Jordy Nelson, limited with a shoulder. Devontae Adams has already been declared. Well, not declared out, sorry. He is still in the concussion protocol, um, which obviously does not bode well for him being cleared to play in this game on Sunday. Um, Aaron Jones um, will be hard-pressed to make it. Uh, Mike McCarthy saying that it's a good likelihood that he will not be able to go. Um, sure sounds like Devontae Mays may get an opportunity again, but we will see. Hey, Paul. Hey, how are you? Jack, any chance Callahan will get a series? Uh, only if Brett Hundley gets hurt, I think is my read on the situation at this point. Um, I'd never say never, but uh, I do tend to think um, if Brett Hundley has a quarterback rating hovering in the 30s, as he did on Saturday night, and doesn't get pulled then, I don't know what's ever going to constitute Mike McCarthy pulling him short of injury. Will we get to see Mays at running back? Dave, I think there's a possibility of that happening. Now, obviously, he did not exactly acquit himself very well the first time he was given a chance, fumbling on his very first two NFL touches. But um, if uh, Aaron Jones is unable to go, you've got to think uh, Mays will get some kind of look. Who's the best team not in the playoffs? That's a really good question. I haven't even looked at the playoff field since the Packers were eliminated. Um, ask me again after the Packers season is over and the playoffs are about to begin. I'll have a much better uh, overview. Will House be playing? Uh, good chance. Hello, Edwin. How are you? People calling for all the coaches' heads. Breathe, people. I agree with that sentiment. Um, however, I do think Dom Capers is on, a, uh, is on very thin ice. I think there's a very, the, probably the best chance of Mike McCarthy letting him go uh, since he's been in charge. Adams at defensive tackle. We'll see. I mean, he hasn't really offered much when given the opportunity. Uh, when can we declare the strength and conditioning team on the IR list? Uh, it's hard for me to put this on the strength, the, the lengthy injury list on the strength and conditioning staff. I mean, uh, Jason Spriggs reportedly has a dislocated kneecap. Uh, it does, doesn't have much to do with strength and conditioning. Um, Jordy Nelson injuring his shoulder while reaching for a ball in the cold. I can't really put that on the strength and conditioning staff. Um, you know, hamstrings and things like that, maybe you could look at their conditioning regime, their workout regime, maybe even down to nutrition and things like that. But I know it feels like um, the Packers are always injured. I say this all the time. Um, they are this year definitely more snake bit than other NFL teams. But on the whole, since they implemented the changes to their uh, kind of rest and recovery program, their dietary program, et cetera, in 2014, they have been ahead of the curve NFL-wise. What's the deal with Aaron Rodgers and the IR rule? Uh, there is no deal. I think uh, Mike McCarthy put it pretty well on uh, whenever it was, the day after, the morning after that story broke, um, or the morning that the story did break. You know, they followed the rules and procedures. Uh, the one kind of piece of information that ESPN left out of their report when they plastered it all over the internet uh, a couple mornings ago was the NFL itself has to approve all IR designations. So when Rodgers was placed on IR, the NFL approved it. So there was no chance in the world that the NFL was going to then turn around and force the Packers to release Aaron Rodgers. It was, you know, teams complained, I have no doubt. Um, and, and, you know, ESPN went with it because Teams complaining about that, oh, that's a story. I get that. Um, but there was no chance Rodgers was ever going to get released. Uh, can we finish 8-8? Eight eight? Yeah, Brian, they can. Um, I was asked on the radio this morning if they would be, McCarthy would be going all out to win this game because 8-8 eight eight looks better than 7-9. and nine. I think he goes all out to win every game. Uh, it's funny. You look at 7-9 as a record. Sean Payton just finished three seasons in a row at 7-9. Um, and didn't get fired, but didn't turn it around and get back into the playoffs until he fired his defensive coordinator and got a whole new system in and had a very good draft. So 
those things can come to fruition in Green Bay this offseason. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Mike McCarthy pulls the trigger. Can we hire Rex Ryan as defensive coordinator? I've had a lot of people ask me that. I was kind of driving that bandwagon three or four years ago. Uh, but now I think, you know, the game has moved along. Rex was one of the best defensive minds I have ever seen when he was, you know, making his bones as a defensive coordinator in Baltimore. But, uh, you know, he is now, has been in a you know TV studio for over a year. I can't imagine him wanting to get back to the grind of coaching. Um, and I have a real... Uh, trouble imagining Mike McCarthy inviting his personality and his outlandish kind of quotes into the Packers locker room. If there are coaching changes, about when would they occur? That's a really good question. It's actually something I've been talking to my boss about because we have to cover it if it, if and when it happens, when and if it happens. Um, I would tend to think they would happen pretty soon after what they call Black Monday in the NFL, which will be the day after... Um, you know, the NFL slate on New Year's Eve day. Now, that said, McCarthy has traditionally wanted to take his time and, you know, do a thorough overview and review of, you know, everyone in his program. The one thing I think that may hurry him up this year is that if he is inclined to let Dom Capers go and Vic Fangio is let go down in Chicago, which is, you know, there's a very good possibility of that happening, if he wants to jump on him as his defensive coordinator, he's going to have to do it quick because a lot of other teams will be interested. Um, Fangio is the one guy I think that makes a world of sense for McCarthy to bring in. Uh, not only does he run a 3-4 system with kind of the same principles that Dom has. I mean, they came up kind of through the same system, actually. Um, he's done a much better job. I've, I've said this plenty of times. He's done a much better job of adapting his scheme to the modern NFL world. And he does a much better job of uh, limiting explosive plays. His guys are much more disciplined. It is m a much more cohesive unit wherever he's been. Uh, not just in Chicago, but back to San Francisco. Even when that team started bleeding talent, they still played well together, unlike a lot of what we've seen in Green Bay the last two years. Would you be surprised if Elliot Wolf went to another team? No, Travis, not at all. I think he's ready. I mean, he's been continually bumped up the chain of command there in Green Bay and been given raise after raise after raise because they've wanted to keep him around and they don't want to allow, you know, talented evaluators to walk out the door. Uh, but we've started to see him get uh, interviews for other teams. And that, this was after a couple of attempts by teams to interview him that Ted Thompson denied. I think it's only a matter of time. Um, now, will it happen in the next year and a half before Thompson's uh, contract runs out? Uh, you know, only, you know, only time will tell, but I, I do think that, you know, sooner rather than later, he will be running uh, his own program. Now, if that's in Green Bay, that's anybody's guess. And the one person who can answer that question is Mark Murphy. Wide receiver auditions this Sunday. Uh, somewhat. Yeah, definitely. I think Michael Clark will continue to get a bunch of looks. You got to think Geronimo Allison will see more time and, um, yeah, I think those guys on the perimeter especially will get a chance to kind of show what they can do. Especially now, it'll be a nice cha change from seeing what they can do in sub-zero temperatures uh, that they saw Saturday night in Green Bay to a climate-controlled environment in Detroit. What's the chance of seeing Callahan? Nate, minimal. I would think only if Brett Hundley gets hurt. Does the executive committee ever pressure Murphy? No. They may talk to him about things, and they may voice opinions, etc. They have meetings, obviously, but um, Cliff Crystal wrote, and I think Bob McGinn echoed uh, many years ago, the further the executive committee is away from football decisions and football operations, the better the Packers are. And that has been true throughout the history of the franchise. Uh, you do not want uh, the business people of the world, of Northeast Wisconsin and Wisconsin in general, uh, dictating what is going on on the football side of things. You, ju you don't want that anywhere near yeah, your football operations. What is your take on Leonard from the Pat Badgers getting a shot at D.C. and Green Bay? I think that's a real long shot. I can't – I was talking to Tom Oates in the press box a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember where we were. Um, but we were kind of mulling that over, and we were trying to remember the last time, if it ever happened, we couldn't come up with one, when a defensive – or I'm sorry, a college coordinator jumped to the, a coordinator position in the pros, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I just, I can't, I, you know, we racked our brains, couldn't really come up with one. Now, that doesn't mean that it hasn't happened, but 
that is an awfully big jump. And, you know, Jim Leonard, for as smart a player as he was, and there's a reason he followed Rex Ryan everywhere Rex Ryan went, because Ryan ran an incredibly complicated scheme, and Leonard did a great job of getting people lined up, a great job of diagnosing plays in the scheme. Um, he knew it really well. Now, not everybody that played for Rex could do that. Um, and that is, you've seen that bear itself out in his coaching career. He is obviously rocketed to a, a prominent spot there in Wisconsin, and he has done a very good job. Now, the jump from, you know, coordinating against Big Ten offenses to coordinating against uh, the uh, mad scientists of the NFL, I don't know, man, that is a big jump. Now, that's not to say I would dismiss it out of hand, because it's up to Mike McCarthy, and you never know. McCarthy has shown that he's willing to think outside the box on occasion. I, I don't I don't see that happening. I don't see that extreme jump coming, but you never know. Are 2018 schedule opponents set since Green Bay is locked into third place? Yes, they are, Brad. I was reading it this morning. Uh, the NFL put out a release. Uh, I think the only thing that was, was one, I was wondering, I know they're playing in uh, L.A., unless they end up in London, um, you know, with the Rams and... What was the other one? That one was already set, but there was a, there. I, I'm not I'm not going to prattle them off because I'll get them wrong. But yes, they are all set. They are locked into third place no matter what happens on Sunday. Uh, up and down defense kill me. <laughs> Tina, that sounds extreme. Is New England home or away? That will be an away game. Uh, and I do know that because I looked at all the East Coast trips uh, that they have, which will be good for me because I know they play the Jets at. The Jets here in New York, and they play at New England. So for Aaron's travel budget, that's a good thing. I find it hard to imagine Mike McCarthy parting with capers. I agree with you. Uh, it's, you know, he's been given ample opportunity to do so and hasn't done it. It's hard to pinpoint what exactly would be different this year. Now, I, I get that they are poor in so many different statistical categories. Uh, they've had issue after issue, lining up, getting beat by screens, etc. That's all you know, well and good, but they've had plenty of issues throughout the years that McCarthy has, for whatever reason, forgiven his defensive coordinator for. So I'm kind of with you. Now, it does feel different this year. Kind of the groundswell of lots of kind of noise around the team um, kind of preordaining the dismissal of Capers, but none of that matters. All that matters is what Mike McCarthy thinks. And my hunch is, up to this point, McCarthy's reasoning has been that he thinks Dom Capers is doing the best he can given the personnel he's been given. Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but my hunch is, and it's just a guess, is that what, that's what Mike McCarthy has been thinking. Who's a free agent you could see us possibly going after? Um, ask me again in the offseason when we've got a better idea after um, tags have been distributed. Um, I go through this every offseason, and I get why people are all excited and they want to look at names and they want to ma play matchmaker and all that. But these, especially, I have people sending me lists already, free agent lists, and could we get this guy, could we get that guy? It, until we get an idea of who's going to be tagged, uh, who realistically is going to be on the market, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to, you know, play guesswork. Um, you know, I've, I've seen names like Jimmy Graham thrown out there, and a couple other names. I just, I can't imagine them actually getting to the open market. Now, that doesn't mean they won't, but um, you got to let some things play out there. Um, forfeit, Kenny. They're not going to forfeit. They're going to play to win the game, as a famous man once said, and now coach of Arizona State. I'll face the F NFC West. What do you do about the new tight end? What do you about... Oh, what do I know about the new tight end? Peter, uh, well, I know that he was uh, brought in by the Chiefs after the draft and then released on August 1st, uh, and then the Packers picked him up. And it was funny because he came in and obviously Raw didn't know the playbook, etc. But Rodgers went to him early and often in practice during camp just to try and see what they had in him. And Bird, while he, you know, there was one, I remember the very first time Rodgers ever went to him, he slipped and fell. And I think it resulted in an interception. But, you know, Rodgers kept going back to him during the summer. And the kid made a play here and there. And I think he did a really good job of getting inside the playbook and learning where to be, um, you know, learning the checks and learning everything in, in, as far as the mental part of the game because Rodgers kept going to him. And that doesn't happen unless a, a guy has demonstrated that he has gotten in his playbook, knows the offense, knows where to be. Um, 
you know, and obviously he did enough to earn a spot in the, on the practice squad. So um, he's an athletic kid, incredibly raw. Uh, he played quarterback for a while before uh, ending up as a tight end. And uh, he's an intriguing prospect. But, you know, we'll see. I, I doubt we see him much on, uh, on Sunday, but you never know. Which Packers starter do you think will make it to the open market? Ooh, that's a good question. I think there's a good chance Morgan Burnett does. I think there's a, I think there's a fifty-fifty chance Corey Lindsley does. I can't imagine Devontae Adams making it out there, but you never know. Um, yeah, I think those are, those would be my three. That would be the the ranking, I guess I get. Is the 49ers due to Jimmy? I guess doing well, due to Jimmy Garoppolo being that good, or proof that Shanahan is a great offensive mind? I think it's a combination of Shanahan being a very good offensive coach, uh, have being given a very talented quarterback, and a quarterback who was allowed to sit and learn, uh, obviously got some experience starting last year when Tom Brady was suspended, and now he's with a coach who really knows uh, what he's doing when it comes to designing an offense. You look no further than the step back the, the Falcons took this year when Shanahan left. Uh, Shanahan is a special coach, and uh, the 49ers were smart to pounce on him. Not Cobb, Chris. No, I don't think Cobb makes the market. He's, you know, he's not going to get cut. And I think that what they'll do is probably restructure his deal. Has to be some disconnect between Ted and Dom. Always young on D with inexperience and a difficult scheme. How would 2018 change that? Well, Chad, you would think a change of the coordinator. And um, yes, I agree that there has been a disconnect there for some time. And I do believe that is why McCarthy has stuck with him, uh, because he doesn't necessarily think it's Dom's fault. Again, I don't have any inside intel on that. McCarthy has never said as much, but it sure would appear that way. Who takes a pay cut this offseason? Jim, that's a good question. Um, depends. It, I think a lot of this will be cosmetic. I think um, guys will be able to re-earn money they may give away early on down the line. Um, guys like Jordy Nelson, Clay Matthews, Randall Cobb. I think they'll restructure and or extend some of those guys, especially Matthews, where their cap hit and the money they're owed up front maybe isn't as significant, but it's spread out over a few more years. Um, Nelson, I think Jordy Nelson will be the trickiest. Um, it's clear what his value is when Rodgers is the quarterback. Um, but even when Rodgers came back in that Carolina game, uh, you know Nelson definitely looked limited. But then you can also point to the play where he beats a guy on a double move and Rodgers just underthrows it on what should have probably been a touchdown. So that I think Nelson will be the trickiest, but I do think um, there'll be a lot of restructuring going on. Russ Ball is going to have his work cut out for him this, this off season. So you really don't think there'll be any changes in leadership and Ted, Mike, and Dom? Not so, well, I don't think Ted Thompson's going anywhere, and I don't, definitely don't think Mike McCarthy's going anywhere. I do think there's a good chance Dom Capers is gone, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. But you know, of the three, that's the most likely. Do you think Clay will go back to inside linebacker? Paul, I think he should. Now, will he? I don't know, man. They haven't shown any kind of desire to move him in there full time, which kind of baffles me. Uh, they keep throwing Jake Ryan out there. And look, Jake Ryan tries hard, and uh, he's a bit of a thumper, and he's an asset off the bench, I would say. But, man, they could upgrade so much if they could just you know move Matthews inside there and find someone complimentary to Perry on the other side, uh, outside. Maybe they found something in Reggie Gilbert. Maybe we'll see some more from him um, on Sunday in Detroit. But, yeah, I really think they're wasting Clay outside. What is everyone's problem with Jordy? Um, I don't know if I have a problem with Jordy, but you can't deny looking at his tape over the course of the last eight, nine weeks and tell me that that guy that we've seen with the ball in his hands is near the athlete that we saw even towards the end of last year. Man, Father Time is undefeated, and when he comes knocking, he just doesn't wait for you to open the door. He opens it up himself, and he walks in, and he makes himself at home. And Jordy Nelson, for you know the last month, month and a half, has looked a noticeably slower, noticeably uh, less of it been less, much less explosion in his movements, especially laterally, trying to you know, make yards after the catch. Um, he can still make a play. He can still read a defense, and he can still, you know, still is probably the best guy on the team as far as 
uh, reading zone coverage on the fly, knowing where to sit down, uh, lots of intangibles there. But a lot of those intangibles are pretty worthless without Rodgers at quarterback. And his connection with Rodgers is what makes him valuable to that team. Um, but do you pay upwards of, you know, 10, 11, 12 million dollars for that? I don't know. Uh, as much as I love Jordy, is going to be 33 and cost over 10 million, should be cut in my opinion. I'd be surprised if they went that route because it hasn't been Thompson's MO generally, but I do think it's a possibility. I do think they maybe be on the table. Yeah, let's have time for one or two more here. We haven't drafted a decent wide receiver since Adams. Possibly. I mean, who have they taken, though? They've taken a bunch of day three guys. I mean, they haven't really spent some serious draft capital since Adams. I mean, Adams is a pretty darn good wide receiver. And it's kind of funny how in his second year, everybody wanted Adams cut. So, you know, maybe let those guys play out, the, the seventh round guys, the day three guys, you know, that have been on the practice squad. So, you know, you got to let it play out. Uh, if you're a GM, what's your first move to make this offseason? Good question, Chad. Probably lock up Adams. Um, and I lock up Lindsley in that order. Balaga coming back. Demario, I think he'll definitely, um, I think there's, a, not definitely, there's a good chance he starts the year on PUP, but I do think he'll be back. Um, now, a lot of that depends on his rehab and how he looks. Uh, if he comes back and he can't move or he has clearly lost something, it wouldn't surprise me to see him see them cut him. But um, I think they let it play out and they let it at least get to camp and see how he's moving. Do we really need another receiver? As long as Mike McCarthy's in Green Bay, they need as many wide receivers as they can get. Um, we've seen too often how this team uh, kind of falls apart if uh, they're down a man in the rotation. Uh, look no further to 2015 when Jordy Nelson went out. The whole thing fell apart. Um, I think Geronimo Allison last year really saved their bacon. Um, when injuries struck and he was forced to play down the, down the stretch, they were able to stay in a lot of their three wide receiver sets. Um, you know, McCarthy's offense is very, especially as it's designed around Aaron Rodgers, is very wide receiver centric. So that's why we've seen Ted, for the most part, draft wide receivers every single year. Because when you're running three, four wide receiver sets every single game, uh, that means you have to practice that way. That means you need it for your first and second string, which means you need six, seven, eight wide receivers all the time. So they're always going to have lots of wide receivers uh, on the ready, and they're always going to need talent at the position. Will you ask Ted about Bennett? Oh, I can't wait to ask Ted about Bennett. I've, I've just, I'm just waiting for the combine to ask Ted about Bennett, and I know exactly what the answer is going to be. You can, I asked him about uh, TJ Lang last year, and I'm going to get the same answer this year. It's going to be, we don't talk about people who are uh, players on other teams. That is going to be the answer. I already know it, but it's got to be asked, so I will ask it. What is the future of Callahan? Dan, that's a good question. I think there's a good chance they bring him back next year as a camp arm, but I also think there's a good chance they bring in somebody, whether it's a draft pick or a veteran, to compete with Hunley for the backup spot, which will most likely relegate Callahan to the street. But there's a lot to play out there. Will the Bennett deal make them more scared of free agency? Justin, I don't think so. Um, that's a very, very isolated incident. Um, you know, they've also had some real fines in free agency with this year with um, Jari Evans playing as well as he did on a dirt cheap contract. I think Ahmad Brooks has done a really good job when he's healthy. Now, obviously the back issue really robbed him of a lot of, a lot of playing time, but when he's been out there, he has been effective. Uh, and then Devon House, while very inconsistent and very up and down, uh, for as little money as they're paying him, the ROI there isn't terrible. So, you know, you can go and you can say the Bennett thing is so dramatic and maybe that will make them gun shy, but I don't really think so. I think they'll continue to kind of, you know, pick their way through uh, late day free agency. I don't think they're ever going to be players early on as long as Thompson's there, though. Why is McCarthy so combative? Ooh, good question. Um, I don't... I don't know. I wouldn't call him combative. I, I'd say, you know, he does have his pressure points, and when they get pressed, he uh, he does kind of lock up and kind of push back. But, you know, man, I've seen a lot of other coaches around the league who are a lot worse than McCarthy. He is he does he does have his points, his, his touchy subjects, uh, whether it's his offense. Gosh, don't 
ask him about anything having to do with scheme or uh, why he called a play or what he was thinking in a certain situation. He doesn't want to hear any of that. Um, but I get, and I still ask it, and I still get yelled at, and it's fine. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't, Like I said, I wouldn't call him combative. I, you know, he is definitely a little sensitive about certain issues. But, you know, he, he's no worse than any, any other coach. Uh, do you think the Packers will go to another Super Bowl with Thompson as GM? But I think they have as good a chance as most contenders, uh, as long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy. We saw how that all fell apart um, this year. But, you know, with Rodgers at quarterback, absolutely. Uh, they have a chance. You know, do I think they will? Man, you know, roll the dice. I don't know. Look at my crystal ball. You know, they have as good a chance as any other perennial contender, whether it's the Steelers, um, you know, the Seahawks, although they've had a down year, obviously. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're as talented with Rodgers there as anyone else. And obviously the outlier is always going to be the Patriots. Uh, it's hard to measure anybody against the Patriots when they have the greatest modern coach uh, the NFL has ever seen. Um, and obviously Tom Brady in the conversation for the greatest quarterback ever. Yeah, so it's yeah, that's such an outlier to me. But, you know, their chance is as good as anybody's as long as Rodgers is healthy. Do you worry about Rodgers getting, being injury-prone as he gets older? No, not really. I mean, no more so than any other player. He's, he's a football player. He's got to play football, and he, he may get hurt. He may not. But, um, you know, it, it's incumbent upon Ted Thompson to have a backup available who can help them win some football games. Um, clearly, the on-the-job on training of Brett Hundley cost them many, many games this season, and it definitely, ultimately, cost them a shot at the postseason. So that's on Thompson. He gets to wear that. But as far as Rodgers and will he be injury prone, I, you know, I no more so than, you know, remember early in his career, everyone said, even before he started, became a starter, everyone's, oh my gosh, he's injury prone because he broke his foot in that game against the Patriots where he uh, came in and played mop, mop up duty to Favre when they were getting blown out. Um, and then there was one other incident where he had some kind of minor issue um, minor injury, and you know those two happened back to back years, and everyone said, "Oh my gosh, he's injury prone." Um, but then he started, he became a starter, and he became one of the toughest guys I've ever seen on the football field. That's the thing that people don't remember. Uh, people remember 2013 when he missed a bunch of games because of the shoulder. And they're going to remember this year because he missed so many games with that shoulder. But what people don't remember are all the times he's been taking hellacious hits and gotten up and waved off the training staff and stayed in the game. I mean, I know. Packers fans are a bit spoiled in that regard because he's coming after Brett Favre, who never came out. Um, but, you know, Rodgers is a tough son of a bitch, and he doesn't get enough credit for that. Um, but, yeah, is he going to get more injury prone as he gets older? Uh, no more so than any other aging NFL player. All right, everybody, I'm, uh, I'm going to take off, but um, thanks for checking it out. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. They do go back. They do go by very fast, but make sure you're checking out PackersNews.com for all the latest um, we have everything for you from practice today, uh, including the long, long injury list. Um, we'll have everything today, tomorrow. Tomorrow's the only padded practice they'll have before they play the Lions on Sunday. So be sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. Um, thanks a lot, everyone. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good night.